Glory to God. Let's continue and get this done. We give God all the praise. Now, the spirit of love. We dealt with the spirit of power. The spirit of love is this. Remember the Lord Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so the spirit of love is a place where you stay connected to God. And that's what stops fear from getting you to go in the direction Satan wants you to go. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So keeping the commandments of God, keeping what he commands you for your life. Everybody has to seek God and find out what the Lord has commanded them for their life. Seeking God for the commandments for your life. Once you get those commandments and you know the route that God wants you to go. Nothing of fear can dominate you. Meaning Satan can't bring you into a direction, a decision that God doesn't want or a mindset. Because the spirit of love has already birthed surrender and submission in you. Surrender and submission is so strong in you that you, you, you can't even consider what fear will have you consider because you already done uh, agreed to the supernatural that love brings. So the spirit of love is so powerful because the spirit of love will link you to the, the flow of yielding to God, saying yes. You'll never tell him no. If he say, I want you to move over to thing, you might have all type of stuff going on here, but you say, fine, I'll move. Because that's what the spirit of love does. It creates such an adaptation, um, uh, flexibility. That's what the spirit of God just said to me. The spirit of love creates uh, flexibility. So you become flexible. Isn't that amazing? You're, you'll become flexible to God's schedule. If God said, normally I know that I would have you do this, but I want you to do this. Like you'll adapt to that. You'll change just for the Lord. See, it was the spirit of love for the disciples to even follow King Jesus, because you notice uh, they're fishers, tax collectors, all that type of stuff, or they, you know they're they're working some type of job in the natural, and then the Lord calls them away. The two brothers, He called them away. I think James and John, or whoever they were, I think James and John, the brothers, they was there, and the Lord Jesus calls them away in the midst of their biological dad being there. In the midst of their biological dad being there, the Lord Jesus still calls them away. So it, the spirit of love had to overtake them for them to even say yes and not resist it because they wasn't underneath um, manipulation to follow the Lord. They had just met the Lord. But it was the spirit of love that let them know, let me adapt to this. Let me yield to this. Let me surrender to this. So the spirit of love will make you so consumed with fascination, adoration for master Jesus that you won't even want what fear will produce in you, which is wrong habits, wrong atmospheres, wrong mindsets, wrong behavior, wrong company. The Bible says bad company corrupt good character. So the corruption power of Satan is in wrong people. The corruption power of Satan is in listening to bad words. People that tell you things that God doesn't want in your system, in your spirit, in your soul. So the spirit of love, it will um, cause you to become interested in the father. You'll be so interested in the father that you won't want another route. The spirit of love is needed if you're going to make it because that's going to be the only thing that's going to keep you when it look like you in the hottest fire and the strongest storm. The spirit of love is what's going to keep you under composure, under submission. That's the only thing. 
the spirit of love. It's the spirit of love that caused Ruth, Ruth to keep on enjoying the path God had for her even after her husband died. It was the spirit of love that caused Ruth to say, your people shall be my people, your God shall be my God to Naomi. She never judged Naomi and said, Naomi, you must got the spirit of death on you because everybody dying since I got connected to you. No, the spirit of love made her see Naomi as a prophetic voice to her. And she knew that Naomi was a sign to give her counsel. And Naomi was the very one that gave her the raw anointing of how to activate the favor with Boaz. Isn't that amazing? Naomi transferred the raw anointing to Ruth so that Ruth could activate fresh favor with Boaz. If it was not for Naomi, she could have very well had missed out on the favor of God. But Naomi had the deep and raw wisdom of how to activate it, how to put it into action, what to do, what to say, how to act, how to look, how to respond. But imagine Ruth would have never experienced that if she didn't yield to the spirit of love. The spirit of love will keep you from missing God. The spirit of love will keep you from pondering anything that could stop your obedience to God's sudden instructions, sudden schedule, sudden commands. And then saints, I wanna get to this because this is my main subject, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7. The spirit of a sound mind. The spirit of a sound mind. I want to bring you into a fresh revelation about this because sound determines everything. If you hear um, a car motor, you know it, you know it might be a Mustang, you know it might be a Charger, you know it might be uh, a Challenger. You equate things with sound. If you hear pop, 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 you acquaint it with a gun or firecrackers. You hear sirens, you acquaint it with a police vehicle or ambulance. Sound is everything. One of the last things that people lose when they're dying is sound. If someone is in a coma, they can hear the sound of your voice. They can hear what you're talking about. Sound is one of the last things that is lost in a person. So sound is, um, is a magnifier. Sound will always be exalted. The Bible even says that a, a calm answer turns away wrath. How does a calm answer stop wrath, turns away wrath? A soft answer rather, which is one and the same. Because the sound of the voice is determining the reaction of the hearer. Glory to God. The sound in which the person is talking will determine the reaction in which the person that is hearing is hearing. So I say a soft answer turns away wrath because even the sound or the tone, the sound in which the person is conveying a message will touch the emotional area of the person that's hearing the message. So, this is why most times when people are preaching, they get louder. See, I'm dealing with something deep here. 
I'm dealing with something deep here. <laughs> That's why when people are preaching, they tend to get louder. You ever heard somebody preach it's like they, they start getting more louder? Because sound. Their intent is to touch your emotions. When people preach, they tend to get louder because their aim, their target is to touch your emotional realm, your soulless realm. They want the message to penetrate you in a deeper capacity, to create a change, a redirection, um, a new philosophy, a new concept, a new way of looking at it. You see this? So when somebody is, is, is preaching, they tend to get louder. When a, when a mother is correcting her child, when a man is correcting their child, their voice tends to get louder because... The sound of their voice is to convey no nonsense. I need your urgent obedience. I need your urgent attention. I need your urgent change. I don't want you to continue acting like this. So the voice, the sound begins to get higher. The word of God declared that when Jesus met that man, that he said, I was over people too. And he needed the Lord to release the healing. And instead of Jesus going to his house, he said, just send the word. Just send the word. He said, just send the word. Why is he telling Jesus to send the word? Because he knew prophetically that sound travels. Wow, 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 wow. Could, could I deal with some deep stuff here? Or, or should we just shut down? Because this is like my third time getting back on. Should, should I just shut down and wait till another time, till, till later this year to deal with this? Wait till later this year? All right. Everybody, I want to thank everybody for watching. He said, send the word because he knew that sound travels. So he understood the law of sound. He told the Lord Jesus, send the word and they'll be healed. They'll be delivered. And the person was healed and delivered off of the sound of the word. The Lord Jesus did not touch the person that needed the, deliver the deliverance. But the sound touched him. Wow. Wow. It was a sound of Jesus speaking into the atmosphere that released a supernatural turnaround healing in the physical issue that the person was suffering from. Wow. If sound, the law of sound is so powerful that Jesus could release his word and send it into the atmosphere and it connects with the blood. The, the physical organs, the physical body, the physical joints of that person that's sick and restores it back into the heavenly realm, into the restored realm, into the perfected realm. How much more that when you use the sound of the word, the Bible says what? Um, I want to say, is that Psalm 103.20? Hearken to the voice of his word. Hearken to the voice of his word. It says angels hearken to the voice of his word. Now, saints, I want you to think about this. That means that angels, when they hear the sound of his word. Yeah, that's Psalm 103.20. When they hear the sound of his word, they find their bodies doing the same thing that they would do when God spoke that word in heaven. They find themselves doing the same reaction that they would react to the father. When he spoke that word. 
So saints, Psalm 103 verse 20 talked about how angels hearken to the voice of his word. Because that's all dealing with sound. Saints, the law of sound is so powerful. And somebody remember that, the law of sound. This is just something fresh I'm teaching, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. The Father speaking to me on this. He told me to get back on here and continue this teaching because it needed to it needed to sit in your spirit, your soul. It's a download from the Father. It's a scroll from angels. My angels are empowering me to minister something fresh to you and this powerful. The law of sound was so amazing that Elijah began to say that he heard the sound of the abundance of rain. Remember, Elijah is dealing with sound. And that was 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. He didn't say that I hear rain, or I see rain, or I feel rain. He said, I hear the sound. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain in 1 Kings 18, 41. Now, saints, something that you want to catch is before he said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain, the word of God declares that he said, go up, get thee up, eat and drink, for there's a sound of the abundance of rain. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Now, I want, I want to throw this at you that you, you probably never heard before. He tells him that you have to go up. Because this sound is operating in the heavens. Is, oper is operating, is functioning, is happening by the throne of God. So he said, go up. Eat and drink, meaning that there's a supply. But it's not downwards, it's not horizontal, it's vertical, it's upwards. You have to go up, meaning you have to ascend to get there. In Psalm 24, say, who can ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? But he that got clean hands and a pure heart. Then he reveals that there is a sound of abundance. So even abundance have a sound. There's a sound that God will let you constantly hear when you are moving into abundance. And what's one of the sounds that you'll constantly hear? You'll hear money coming. You'll hear God's grace for multiplying you. You'll hear the word of wealth. There's a sound. You'll hear favor. You'll get news that favor is happening somewhere. Whether it be somebody bought your meal for you, somebody let you skip the line. Like saints, I've been in lines before and people let me skip the line. That's favor. Everybody else is waiting. They say, no, 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 you come in front. It's favor. Favor has a sound. Abundance has a sound. When God is taking your finances to the next level, there's a sound. You'll hear different words. God will position you to hear different words. You, because when you in the place of lack and struggle, you'll hear people always talking a certain way. You know, we ain't got enough. We still believe in God to come through for us. And you hear all those, those, som those somber words, those dusty words. You know, I'm just, I'm just holding on, baby. We, you know, you know how it is. You know, we just holding on and believing God, trusting, leaning on the everlasting arms. Baby, you're not leaning on nothing. Baby, you've been leaning. You, you've been leaning so long. I think that you're drinking lean. This, I think that's what's happening. You ain't telling, you're not telling us the truth. 
You drinking lean. That that's you've been listening to Lil Baby. You ain't tell us the whole story, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. <laughs> so so look at this here. When the Bible says a sound mind, remember I'm in Timothy uh what is one seven? He said, the spirit of a sound mind. Now look at this here. The sound mind is the mind that is hearing God constantly. It does not hear serpents. It does not hear scorpions. It does not hear temptation. It does not hear weakness. It does not hear the sound of fear or the sound of Fatigue, it does not hear the sound of quitting, anger, wrath, offense. It doesn't hear the sound of any of those things. It only hears the sound of the voice of God. Think about this. The sound mind is, is the place where the Lord is your only teacher. Your man of God is your only teacher. You know where the word is scheduled by God to proceed from, to get to you. So that you'll never be confused, double-minded. Torn to and fro with every wind of doctrine. So the sound mind is a supernatural stability that God gives you. Where the devil can't creep in to your thought process, your meditation, your memory. Satan can't say anything to you. Satan can't interject his opinion. Satan can't um, suggest anything to you. You are completely isolated from demonic pathways. The sound mind means that the anointing is strong and is only going to get stronger in you because you're fully committed, devoted, and focused. The sound mind means that you have no place to the devil. Satan cannot tell you anything or affect you in any way. You are completely tied in to truth. You're protecting your freedom. The sound mind means that you're protecting your freedom. You're not letting yourself become reacquainted with old things. All things have passed away. All things have passed away and all things have become new. So the sound mind is the newness of life, is the newness of your person, the newness of your perception, the newness of your philosophy, your belief system. The newness of your surrender is all in the sound mind. When you receive the sound mind, it is a spirit, meaning that this is a dimension of the Holy Ghost. You have to want this dimension. Because as long as you function like everybody else, your life just going to go in circles. Being cursed means being inconsistent. Being cursed means being inconsistent. Being blessed means being persistent. When God blesses you, he puts a mind mantle on you. It's called a sound mind. It's called a mind that never wavers. It never gets taken off path. It never gets stopped. It never gets hindered. It never gets interrupted. It never gets corrupted. A sound mind is a mind that does not get poisoned. There's no wrong impartation that's able to stay there. Because even if a wrong impartation comes, you cast down imaginations and high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So the sound mind is the knowledge of God. 
A sound mind is hunger to be taught, hunger to be corrected, hunger to be instructed. A sound mind is the ability to seek out God's next command, God's next focus, God's next mission. You can't even move in submission without a mission from God. How can you submit yourself to God if you don't know what you're submitting to? And so a sound mind reveals the mission so that you can move in submission. 